7372. Some of these are also, which is always, which is always exciting. So I'm going to start off with some miscellaneous good stuff, as, as I call it. This is a couple things that I didn't have a great category to go put some of these things in. So I'm just going to throw them here and cover them right at the beginning. Well, USB drive technology. This has been one of the areas that we've really started to continue to look at and invest in. Um, technology as a whole changes. It changes rapidly. We've seen it as we move from you know mainframes to desktops to mobile devices. Well, how we save things also is changing. You know, tape drives. I mean, tape drives to D to optical. Well, some of those technologies are are becoming very long in the tooth and really as we look into the future are likely not going to be available uh, nor do we want them available um, going into the future because there's better options things like a USB thumb drive or a flash drive for instance is a fantastic technology and that's something that we're continuing to invest in um, here on IBMI and going to, to be leveraging and one of the big things that we did in this uh, these TRs is we made some significant changes and updates. So a couple of uh, scenarios where you can actually, in the past, if you were trying to create like an optical image drive or, or try to use a USB flash drive to download PTFs, right, it, it, it really wasn't possible. You had to burn them to DVD catalog, to a DVD, or, or put them on IFS or something of those lines. Well, now with the new changes that we've made in the ability to read and manage and deal with USBs, you can, for example, PTFs. I can take down, I can download ISO images of the PTFs onto my PC. I can then put them on the flash drive, plug the flash drive into my IBMI, and apply them directly from there. It's really made it easy to be able to deal with this type of media. Um, so really a lot of opportunities as we look into the future. Um, you know, we're looking, you being able to do booting off of USB flash drives, great for disaster recovery and things of that nature. And so this is definitely an area that we're continuing to invest in and adding lots of interesting new stuff here. So flash drives. Um, one of the next things, RPG. A rather interesting update we added in RPG. Um, this is something that was added uh, 7.1 through 7.3. We added a new parameter to the create bind RPG or create RPG mod commands. And it allows you to specify your target CSID, which solves a significant problem where if you had your source code for RPG stored in Unicode, the compiler would have a problem. It wouldn't recognize things properly. And so this new parameter helps alleviate that issue. Now, why is storing your source code in Unicode something you might even care about? Well, as we move towards storing source code in things like IFS or other modern file systems, Unicode is the primary CSID that's used in those. And as we look at other IDEs and start using things maybe like Orion or web-based development um, tooling, it becomes much more common for that Unicode. Uh, so this allows the compiler to be able to interact seamlessly with what we're doing um, and what the industry is going towards when it comes to other parts of your application development processing. Okay. Next. I'm going to spend a second or two talking about some licensing and offering updates. There's a couple things in here that are rather interesting. Um, I'm certainly not one that can um, go into the finer details um, for these. Um, read the RFA, send, send notes and letters, and we'll get you the right information. Um, so please don't hesitate to send a note if you have questions either, by the way. We're happy to get you that. So first off, um, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to simplify things, trying to make it easier for you to get your jobs done, for us to be able to deal with things and just generally make life 
better. So uh, changes that are going on to the temporary licensing offering changes. So basically temporary keys. Um, simplification going on here um, where you no longer have to go specify individual products. You can just go get a temporary key for all LPs available under your 5733 ITL. Um, the Migration periods, we've upped from 15 days to 30 days. Again, um, the, we've changed the way the keys are activated, all targeted at trying to make it easier for you when you're doing upgrades, make it easier for us so that, you know, you guys are, if it takes you a couple extra days, you're not harassing us and being frustrated and all those kind of good things. So this is one of our updates. One of the other with things. There's some uh, withdrawals and support discontinuances. There's the IBM relocation offering um, stuff. That's going to be going away. Um, the other one that I want to draw your attention to is the advanced function printing utilities, the AF1 support. Um, that will be going end of service effective April 30th, uh, sorry, September 30th of 2017. Then the other simplification thing that is I'm rather excited about is we're simplifying how you get a number of products. So in the past, all of these products I have listed here at the bottom, you would have to order individually, and you would be paying a very small amount. You know, so you could get ARE, and it would have cost you $250 or something like that. If you would have ordered fax, it would have cost you a small amount of money. Same with system management or kicks, managed system services, or OptiConnect. These were all very low-priced products, and these are going to be um, removed from a that low-priced product. You now will be getting them with the operating system, so it's going to be much easier for you to get these, and they'll be um, uh, readily available on all IBM orders and upgrades. So we're rather excited about um, that, making some of these key pieces of functionality uh, very readily available. All right, enough about licenses and stuff. Let's talk about a brand new offering that we're adding. So we have a new product our, called our IBM Cloud Storage Solutions for I. And this is, like I said, it's, it's a brand new offering that we're coming out with, and we're rather excited about what the options hold for this one. So this new LPP, um, like I said, it was announced yesterday. It'll be GA'd. Uh, November 11th is the current target for the GA for the for this, and the idea is we're providing an API that enables the deployment of IBM I data to a public cloud. Basically, in a nutshell, allowing you to do a system save, and as opposed to saving that save to some type of optical media, tape drive or some other type of physical device, you can save it to the cloud. And you can go to a place like SoftLayer, for example, and you can save your data there. Now, long term, this is possibly a, a replacement for, and we talk about our disaster recovery and things of that nature, where we take a, we, we save something to a tape, we take that tape, we package it up, into a box and we send it off to some storage location every couple weeks to make certain that we have a uh, point in time disaster because I have copies of things already. Certainly not everything that we want to deliver. This is what I would consider a, a phase one. Um, we, we've initially targeted for customers that are under a terabyte of data. Can you move more than that? Yep. A lot of it's going to depend on the speed of your um, uh, pipe between your your cloud and your system. Um, our initial public uh, provider is currently SoftLayer. Yep, we're looking at um, adding others at some point, but um, for today, we are, but BRMS, which is our backup relation as well, so we've integrated this type of um, solution right into BRMS, so you can actually leverage your existing BRMS support um, with these. Um, so we're looking at a number of other features as we roll this out. Um, one of the things that we would love to hear 
is if people start leveraging and using this stuff, you, this is where we want to get your feedback. How, what are the next things that would make sense? What are the features that we need to have to really make this work well in your environment? So it's a, fundamentally a topology. It, it's all via virtual tape. Um, when you do a save, you're going to save your storage to some kind of a dish, uh, cache via a disk pool. That data is then saved and moved up to your IBMI cloud through uh, an asynchronous um, connection. So if you're a couple gigs and you got a, a slow have to this type of media format, um, it will also allow you to specify where your cloud is and it'll go ahead and do the actual work of moving data to and from your cloud connection. Like I say, long term, we're looking at adding other product um, with this cloud storage usage uh, concepts, object sharing, being able to easily move objects, well, almost like a box location where I could send something up to you know, my cloud and I could go get it from another system or, or whatever. Um, you possibly could do a few things along those lines today, although that's really not what our current offering is really targeted towards. What we're really targeting this first offering is being able to take that backup and archive, being able to manage that data, and being able to move that data up into a cloud. And then if you have a DR situation, um, being able to get at that and uh, easily move forward um, with those uh, updates from your cloud distribution. So again, we're, we're excited about this. This is a couple um, things to be aware of with this. The, the user interfaces, the GUIs, the, uh, the commands and whatnot, they are English only at this point. Um, it, it's not a beta as far as the actual underlying code is concerned, but from the UI perspective, because we didn't get a translation cycle in place, um, you know, that's one thing to be aware of there. Um, there are some key considerations when you talk about these sent. Um, there's some uh, compression support that we're looking at adding in the future, which could certainly um, improve this. And as we continue to you know, c push the technology bus down the highway, these bandwidth considerations are going to get better. But that is certainly one of the things that you might you know, need to think through. I mean, the initial save, which could be fairly large, may take quite a bit of time. And then as you do incremental saves on a daily basis, those, those can certainly um, be significantly faster and just due to the fact that they're quite a bit smaller. And so those are just some things that you'll need to think through on this. Obviously, this is a great solution for customers or business partners that are looking at providing some type of a cloud storage solution their own on their own. This would be a solution that would fit very nicely um, there. So again, questions? Actual GA of the code in November. So again, to, sorry to interrupt. Also do a save restore twenty one with USB drive. That's a great question, um, and I I do not know the answer to that. Um, I know you can do some levels of things. I know, but that's a question. If you want to send that to me in an email, I will get you the answer to that question. Fine. Um, with that, I believe, again, that's a question. If you want to send me in a note, I can get you, make certain that we get you the exact right answer on that one. Ranga, what release do we need to be in to use this new BRMS function? Um, 7.3 for certain, and I thought this was going into 7.2, but that, what did not say on the slide. So, um, best best bet, Ranga, is go look at the website on the developer works, and that information will be there. Liam, cloud storage, any encryption available for this? You don't want unencrypted data in the cloud? Well, you're no fun. Um, the, again, the details will be out on our website. Um, that's one of those things. I think there's encryption, but I can't remember completely because we've gone back and forth on whether that one is containable or not. So great question on that one, Liam. 
How can I view QTEMP files that were created by a batch job currently? That's an, okay. Um, I'm going to skip that particular question. Yeah, I think we're losing a lot of the audience by doing too deep uh, dive questions. We should, I can collect them and we can take it uh, afterwards, I would say. If you want to send them in a note and we'll go ahead and, because some of these are going to be, require some some people who actually work in these areas to get you some specific, they're great questions, but they're specific details of, of the uh, actual implementation. I'll need to get the developers to help with those. Yeah, just continue okay. to send them in. Okay. So I'm going to spend a couple of seconds talking about some of the database things that we did and uh, um, quite a few of the other things now coming up. So first off, we have a couple landing pages um, in developer works. All the information is out here on these developer work pages. Um, the 7.2 TR5 as well as the 7.3 TR1 landing pages. Um, those as Tuan Bruarg is well aware, they go live usually a day or two before GA. But today, I mean, like I said, yesterday everything was uh, out and available. So some of the things that we've done along the lines of tooling for your database engineer. There's been some things that we've delivered uh, earlier this summer in Access Client Solutions, and these things were finally announced in this October announcement. So your database engineer should have quite a lot of useful information now already available to them in the ACS M6 delivery. Um, analyze, compare, show statements, visual explain, your SQL um, plan cache, a lot of functionality has been included in ACS in this space and we're continuing to add more um, even as we speak, the uh, developers are hard at work at adding the next things that we want to include in here. Some of the key things, if you look at what we delivered, this was delivered in August, under run SQL scripts, we continue to add more features there. We have our JDBC configuration manager, name parameters, SQL formatter, global variables, editor improvements, insert from examples, integration into VE, syntax verification. We got little blue stars next to uh, some of these um, items. Those blue stars indicate that what we delivered in ACS is significantly better than what the old tooling in our Access for Windows support was. So we've taken what was there, we listened and understood what our customers were complaining about or how we could make it better, and those are the things that we did when we reinvented this new support. Under show statements, compare, a bunch of new things added there, as well as we delivered Visual Explain this year, which was a, a pretty exciting thing as well. So lots of new features there. From Visual Explain, one of the things that's rather interesting, one of the, with, with Visual Explain, we wanted to deliver something that was very much normal to the user. So we delivered it with the exact same imagery, the exact same usage, it looks and feels exactly like what you've always known forever. Except for, we have a search function. And there's a search bar right up there at the top, and you can go in and type in what you want and hit enter, and it'll go find stuff. And so, an enhanced search capability, and that's something that was not there in the past. So, that's uh, one of those highly useful entities that was added into what you know and love. Run SQL scripts, our SQL formatter. This is actually kind of exciting. It's rather fun. You can go type in your SQL formatter. You can actually go configure how you want to format your SQL. We give you some ability to customize things. So I can go into my configure and I can specify do I want um, keywords uppercase, lowercase, camel case, what's the maximum length for a particular line, how do I want to deal with my indentations, you know, do I want new lines, no new lines, um, do I want to position, you know, two spaces, eight spaces, make it however I want. Then, when I'm looking at a piece of code, 
and I see it's not particularly readable, I can hit my Control Shift F, and voila, it gets um, magically formatted as I've specified it into a nice, pretty set of SQL. So this is a, one of those uh, real nice major new enhancements that we um, just added. With our JDBC configuration support, you click on the JDBC configuration, we give you a nice place to go manage and update all of your JDBC support. Um, in the past, this was a much harder thing to deal with. Today, it's very nicely laid out and easy for you to um, get those specified as you do your run SQL script connections and make certain you have the right connector to the right system. So th that's just a very high level view of a couple of the key highlights. There's quite a bit more in M6. This stuff is very easy to get to now. If you want ACS, I recommend going into Google, going to IBMI space access. That'll get you to our product web page. Click on client solutions. There's a link on there called download. That's all you need to do. Download it and away you go. Switching gears for a minute, let's talk about some um, RPG, DB2, uh, open source things. So before we get to that, um, we're rather excited. Um, this guy, gentleman here, you may or may not know as Jesse Grzynski. I probably should have put his name and email address on here. But it was just announced this week that he is taking over the role as the architect for open source. It's something that I've had under my umbrella for quite a while, um, but I have lots of things under my umbrella, and sometimes um, I can't spend as much time on things as I'd like. Well, Jesse's got an active interest in this particular area. He's already done quite a few things, so it makes a lot of sense to have him really focus on this and gives him an opportunity to broaden the areas that he works in. So I'm very excited to bring Jesse on board. He's going to be our new business architect for open source. So feel free to send cards and letters. Um, if you see him, I know he'll be over in, um, matter of fact, he's in Europe right now. He's on his way to the Benelux conference. And so if you see him there, congratulate him. Tell him you're sorry. Either's fine. A um, couple of the things that we're doing in the open source space. Uh, we've got a, a new um, GitHub repository, a new um, initiative that we're kicking off here to create a ILE open source repository, a place where our RPG and ILE programmers can go do open source things. We want to be able to, our RPG community has for years created all sorts of nice little utilities um, and other types of programs to help solve problems, help fix little business issues that we need to deal with, whether it's you know, language conversions or date conversions or currency this or uh, interfaces into certain SQL services. The list is long and distinguished as about what is possible. And so um, thanks to Liam, um, he's helping out with this significantly as well. And we're going to be create, we have this new GitHub repository, um, OSSILE, where we'll be leveraging the Relic Package Manager to help coordinate and easily um, compile and move RPG open source down to your IBM I that you can start to leverage. So uh, recommend you going and checking that out and contributing. Um, here's the latest. We got a couple people that are contributing to this now. Um, we're looking at hopefully ramping that up quite a bit here over time. So exciting new open source project that we've got started. Other open source updates, OPS will be updated. Um, these updates will not happen in November. They actually will be one month following. So these will be in December of 2016. We'll be adding Perl. And that will be added to our Option 7 tools um, uh, option. i will just get the latest PTF and you'll magically now get Perl. Um, as well as in December, Node.js version 6 
will be available. Um, one of the things to be aware of is uh, option one, which is the first version of Node.js, will be in December. Um, it looks like it'll be moving out of maintenance. And so if you're using Node.js, the first version, we now have version four, which is out there already, and version six will be coming in December. Um, it's probably time for you to think about moving up into one of these newer releases of Node. Um, our OPS page on developer works will be updated with the latest information as that stuff becomes available. Okay? Other things in DB2. Got a couple of um, exciting things going on there. Um, first off, Scott Forsty. He's our architect for database. He is getting ready to start a little whirlwind tour, uh, kind of like where, where in the world is Waldo? Well, where in the world is Scott Forsty? So next week he'll be in Benelux, along with Jesse will be there, as well as Liam will also be in Benelux at the conference. So I'm excited about the opportunities. If you're in the neighborhood or if you're not in the neighborhood, get in the neighborhood. I know there's a couple other events that are going on from the Common Europe perspective that Tornbryog had on the uh, first page. Um, that might be closer to home. Additionally, we have our Power Systems University, which will be going on in London this year. And Scott will be speaking there October 24th through 28th. So uh, some of the content that I'm covering here in this little section, or, or at least giving you at least a, a highlight of, you'll have an opportunity to go here, Scott, and he will go into great depth and give you all the gory details about what's going on in the world of database. So with this particular TR, much like many of the other TRs we have, we have a significant list of updates that went into um, this particular TR, both large items and small items. And so this little thing here, just showing you continual investment, you can see we have some big items that went into each of the last TRs. This particular TR is no exception. In order to get this information, this is where we we love to work on confusing our IBMI family, right? Um, yes, we announced this stuff in a TR, but the delivery of database stuff is still in the database TTF groups. And so if you look here on the screen, you have SF99702 and 99SS703, level 13 and 14. That is the delivery mechanism for this new support that we are going to be talking about. Um, so in order to, so uh, hit the wrong button on my mouse, sorry about that. So in November, we're taking and continuing our roadmap for support of JSON. In June of last year, we delivered our DB2 JSON store. Well, in November of this year, we're delivering JSON table. Um, we'll be looking at publishing features as well as query support um, in future TRs, but here I think we have a really good set of useful information that does some pretty interesting um, things. And so from a overall database perspective, and then we'll just dive into JSON here for just a little bit, our big item for this TR is our JSON table. We also added things for um, include support for SQL routines and triggers. There's a re replace built-in function, as well as improvements to the debugger. So if you have embedded SQL in your RPG, the debugger will perform and deal with that much nicer now. Um, there's also a bunch of performance updates. we are continually looking at updates to how we can make our queries and our database information access work better. Um, we continue to focus on our um, IBM services. We have two brand new services this release, our history log info and job info. Uh, great new services to allow you to get at job information or your history information 
but then be able to leverage SQL to sort through, filter, and find what you're looking for. So these are um, significantly faster or more interesting ways to get at the same information that you might have been able to get at before with a CL command or an API. Now we've been doing these services now for a couple of years and they're really starting to get um, well used and of course the price of success becomes, you know, people start using things and when they start using things they have uh, suggestions. And so one of the things that we've done in this particular TR is a number of our more popular services have a bunch of enhancements to it because people found either uh, problems or um, they wanted additions or could we do it this way instead. Um, all of those things we accounted for and, and those are things that we've added and updated to our services. And again, if you go to our developer works page, there's a link out there for SQL services and you'll get to the long list now of information that we have available through SQL services. So really excited about what those um, offer and how they can be leveraged, both from a systems management perspective and an application development perspective. So they really do provide a, a nice um, avenue versus just the uh, more traditional APIs. Okay, let's talk about JSON tables for just a moment. With JSON tables, it allows you to take JSON expression, take that JSON data, and it'll convert it into relational data. So if I have a bunch of JSON, JSON is going to have your tags and values. Um, it'll take and parse that support, and it'll build it into a database structure for you. Rather fascinating. Um, your D JSON expressions can be gra uh, character or graphic, um, binary. Um, you, there, there's some structural problems here that we you know, tolerate. Some arrays are automatically unnested. Um, you can do that in a couple different manners, whether you do it in a strict or a lax mode. Um, you can even leverage some of the HTTP functions. And, and I'm going to just show one example. I'm not going to go into the get too far down into the weeds on this one. This is a, a Scott Forsty will be happy to spend an hour talking to you about all the wonderful uses of JSON table and how you play with it. But here's a, an interesting um, example that kind of help shows what we're talking about. So the U.S. Department of Commerce um, they put together a study that studied um, IT shops and where they've been saving the most money. And they have a, a feed, it's an HTTPS feed, that goes and gives you a set of JSON data that has this information in it. So you can see I've got a URL listed in this particular um, JSON table query. So I'm, I'm doing a select from JSON table, that's our new function that was delivered. I'm specifying that I want to get an HTTP club where I'm going and calling some website which is going to deliver to me JSON information. I'm going to then go um, using a lax strategy. I'm going to go create the columns with a certain amount of data specified here and we're going to get 10 of the different um, options that they've uh, given us. So. I can get JSON information either from the web or I can get it locally. That's one of the cool things about this support. And when I hit enter, I will get a table that will give me my different strategies, um, what the strategy titles are, the amount type, as well as the amount saved um, in each of the different years in these different areas. And you know, here you can see you know, cloud infrastructure as a service. In 2012, didn't, hadn't, hadn't been invented yet. You know, over the last two years, companies have been saving quite a bit as they've been looking at leveraging that. Same with data center consolidation. You can see that Adobe licenses really hasn't changed any at all, and that's not something that people save money on. So just an interesting, um, it's an interesting study for certain, but the interesting part is we are able to take JSON information, and now this is part of a database table. So, 
Okay, next, rational developer for I. Um, we have our new 9501 version of um, RDI. It is our modern toolbox toolkit for doing RPG, COBOL, C, C++, SQL, DDS development. This is the place to do your development. Um, we continue to make major updates and enhancements in here. Um, we've delivered um, a ton of things in this over the last year, where we just showing you we have continual investment in here. Um, a lot of new features, new functions, and so we're very excited about what's going on in here in, in this particular area. So our latest one is 951. This came out in uh, September, so this is now available. It's been available for about three weeks at best. A um, lot of interesting new features, and I'm going to uh, cover a couple of these because there's a couple of here that I'm rather excited about. And first off, drum roll please, Mac support. Woohoo! Um, you can now run your RDI on your Mac. It installs and runs natively on Mac. You no longer need to have a Windows partition on your Mac. You can run it directly on your Mac. Um, we've got a blog post out there that will show you how to get it installed, as well as show you what um, is supported and what is not supported. There are a few things that are different in the Mac version than the Windows version. So there are a few things that are, there's some native code that runs on your Windows. That native code, we did not move to Mac at this point in time. Um, and there's, those are, those are details. It's, it's a pretty minor list of things, but nonetheless, it's things you might want to be aware of, as well as um, how to work around, you know, some of the nuances of the Mac versus the Windows, um, if you've been used to using this in a Windows environment. So editing on a Mac, um, this is exciting for me since I run on a Mac now. Um, we, I, can, I no longer have to uh, mess around with my Windows machine. I can just happily have my one little place to play. The other item that we added that was a big, big deal, single sign-on support using Kerberos. So I will no longer need to provide login credentials. Um, if, I've, if I have a Kerberos uh, ticket instead, um, that gives me one, one place I can specify, I'll use that and leveraging that type of single sign-on support. Um, once I've signed on to my uh, PC, those credentials can then be used and leveraged as we uh, go forward um, into the future. Um, there was one quick question about Linux. Linux has been supported by RDI for um, quite a long time now already. That's already been available um, and has been for, for uh, uh, I don't know, several years. Okay. Next, um, IFS synchronization support for local projects. Um, as we continue to put more and more source code out in IFS versus source, source physical files, um, we've simply we simplified the project resynchronization bit. So with just a simple click of the button, you can resync projects um, out, out in IFS. Um, and the, re the remote re reconciler will take care of associated products. They'll connect your IFS to the project, save on demand. You can do push, pull, compare. There's a lot of function that was added into here to help simplify and make this process work better, as well as um, support for multiple systems. So I can actually push these changes out to multiple systems if I so need to. And again, we have a nice little blog post that is available that kind of goes into the detail on, on this. So, there's a question, does the remote reconciler really work properly now? Uh, that Yes, that is the entire intent of what was put here. Um, don't believe us, don't blame you, go get it, try it, and let us know. Um, that's, what, that's why we, uh, and there's a blog out here which will help maybe answer some more of those questions for you as well. Um, but Okay, 
live outline, model improvements, a um, number of different things that were added into the, the live model. Um, you can see OSPECs were added as one of the things that we've added here, as a number of other things. I'm not going to go into each of these, but none to say a bunch of stuff that was improved because there were some things here that we don't, didn't work as well as we'd like it or just were missing. Um, with the uh, RPG outline, we can subset to referenced variables. So you can actually go to your outline view um, and you can change the view to subset things to get just the variables that you want that are re um, referenced in a particular area. This was a uh, very highly voted RFE. Um, and so this was something that we were able to get delivered um, in this particular uh, delivery. Now, you may be aware the RDI team is no longer under Rational. The RDI team is now under the IBMI development team itself. Um, so they actually report into the Rochester lab now, even though they live and work in Toronto. And so now that we've got this more tighter affinity towards one, with one another, we've been able to um, help each other out. And one of the issues that has been asked for for quite some time was a better integration of RDI and the um, navigator database tooling. Well, we've now added the, S the ACS support directly into RDI. So you can now launch run SQL scripts. I can highlight a section of SQL source. I can right click. I can then launch run SQL scripts and that support will be embedded into the um, SQL runtime, and I can go ahead and run it. Now, you, you will have to, if you have variables that you specified, you'll have to resolve those variables. Uh, you may need to make a couple changes in there to make sure that it actually runs correctly, um, but the run SQL scripts is there, the latest version that's in RDI, also now contains the SQL formatter as well. So you can reformat your SQL and then copy it back into your RDI in its reformatted and much prettier looking manner. Um, we also added Visual Explain as part of the SQL um, support that's in RDI. So that support is there as well. Additionally, printer output. Um, RDI has had a printer output support for quite a while, but there were some significant limitations in it. And as opposed to rewrite that, we already had a much better support built into ACS. And so I can launch and go get to my spool file support directly um, from RDI, um, and it'll pull in the ACS version. Now, what we've done is we, if you do, if you do not have ACS on your machine, uh, that, that's fine. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, the RDI support actually has these ACS components shipped with RDI. Um, so they're already there. Um, if you have ACS on your machine, um, it'll probably go ahead and leverage that. So if you have a, a slightly newer version, um, if you have a fix pack, some of those things will get automatically um, uh, leveraged. Uh, when you use this from RDI. And then in the uh, spool file support, you know, you can now not only view your spool files, you can do management of that as well. Release, hold, delete, move, standard, standard affair. Okay. Um, one of the other things that we've added into RDI was the eGit plugin was added. So you can connect RDI very easily with a Git repository. Um, we just talked about, you know, the GitHub stuff with our um, open source support that um, uh, was on a previous slide. Um, you know, you can you can see we're definitely moving down this particular path, being able to open up both RPG as well as the IBMI to deal with modern source control, modern tooling. Um, and, and Git is no different. Git is a very normal, modern place to do source control management for many open source projects. And today, we all have that now available um, as a plug-in to RDI, where I could actually have a Git repository out in GitHub, 
and I could connect to it from there. Um, we delivered a Git support in the OPS product last year. Actually, I believe it was earlier this year, sorry, where you can actually create your own GitHub repository on your local machine. And then using this Git provider, I can connect into that. So again, allowing and giving you flexibility to do things um, easily in this you know, modern development world. So we're excited about what this has to, to bring. Block nesting, so I can hit Control Shift O on my command, on, and I will be able to see where all of my nesting occurs. And we get pretty little lines that'll show you um, which is your ends and your beginnings, and to make certain that you have everything all closed and ended up properly, and that things are all in the right order. So, really nice, easy way to actually see what the heck's going on when you get into a more complex code. So bottom line with RDI, you know, you know, the world of RPG is continuing to evolve. Um, RPG has moved from a, a, a column-based column um, punch card language to something that's very new, very modern, really targeted at being able to leverage the skills of today's developers. And RDI has very much kept pace, if not exceeded that, and some of the things that we've brought to the table for RDI. SEU has not been updated in well over a decade, um, and it's getting uh, further and further away from uh, current support um, for certain. A lot of good stuff in the 951. Um, 951 is a fixed upgrade, so it's very easy once you have 95 on to do an upgrade to 951. Um, so we tried to keep things as simple as possible in that respect. We do have a blog site for RDI where you can keep track of some of the latest support as well as um, some articles that cover some of these new features in a little bit more in depth. Um, definitely worth checking that out. Okay. Next. I'm going to spend just a minute on DB2 Web Query. Um, DB2 Web Query had a brand new version come out in April. Um, it was version 2.2. .2. Um, it's 5733 WQX. Um, it is a required product for 7.3, as the old version, QU2, will no longer run on 7.2. And for that matter, um, it'll be going out of support in September of 2016. Oh, look at that. It's now October. Hmm, who knew? So that's already out of support. Um, in our fall fix pack for this new QU2 product, um, we've got a number of things that we've added into here. Um, there's a bunch of new report templates for system administrators to allow, basically provide some dashboarding capabilities um, for doing system management cap um, support. There's some reports that will show you your top CPU, users consuming the most temporary storage. Um, you can do PTF verification in here. So some really interesting things in here. There's some traffic lights for good news, bad news things, some auto-refreshing type dashboards, some interesting things for the system administrator, as well as the your normal, what you see or consider classic Query 400 things. And there's some new tools that they've put in place to help with the modernization of the Query 400 reporting and tools that will do some magical migration and move them into a um, web query format. Um, if you want to learn more, there's a blog spot out there for web query um, with a lot of information about what's available, some videos to get you started. Um, etc. One of the things to be aware of with WebQuery, if it's something that you've looked at once in the past, um, they've changed the way it's licensed. It was once tier-based licensing. It is now licensed by core. And so even if you have multiple cores on your machine, you can actually get this license for a single core, which makes it very affordable um, and really gets you the ability to start leveraging and using this very easily. 
So a couple things. We have some marketing team that's created a couple new things. We've got a, you'll, you'll see some new marketing collateral here and there. We've got a couple new posters that uh, they've created um, that you'll see different places. Um, with our Get and Orion support, 7.3 has gotten some new, new stuff for the enhanced security as well as our um, deepening of our uh, data insight. And so these are some, some things you'll see. We've, like I said, we, they had some videos earlier this year. So we're starting to see some, some help from the marketing team, which we're, I'm personally very excited about having some of this um, available to us. Okay, um, like I said, the charts will be posted um, at some point as well as the actual um, presentation itself um, from a recorded perspective. Uh, any other um, questions that people have? So That's the, the highlights of it. Thank you very much. First of all, Tim, very, very good and, and uh, a lot of good information in that presentation. So I put the handouts in the tool, go to webinar, so it should be under the menu handouts. I don't know if everybody's seen it, but it's, it's there. And I know some people already downloaded it. Um, so the questions, I think you answered most of them. Should we go through a few of them again, Tim? Or have you went um, through the questions? It, the, the very beginning ones, there was a questions on the thumb drive support. Um, it, it would be best to get that into an email. That way I can get the exact answers and then you can send it out to the to the, to the distribution list. Okay. Is that sure. okay? Yeah, it's very good. So we're closing this session and, and uh, have a good day in Rochester. And thank you very much again for spreading the, the word about IBMI. Always happy to. Okay, do take Thank care. You. Take Thanks care. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.